Good afternoon, you're watching Midday News, where we get you the biggest developing news stories at the top of one. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and these are the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates a first PIO parliamentary conference and reaches out to the NRIs, calling them partners in vision for India's development, says India is going through a positive transformation. Two militants killed in an encounter with security forces in South Kashmir's Anantnag success for the joint team of JNK police and the Indian Army after anti-insurgency operation. Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri elected unopposed in Baipur to Rajya Sabha seat from Uttar Pradesh. Aam Aadmi Party strengthens its position in Parliament with three of its members from Delhi elected to Rajya Sabha unopposed. Relief for close to 5 lakh Indian employees in the US. Reports say the Trump administration has decided to hold back plan to deport thousands of H-1B visa holders. Proposal will have denied a visa extension to green card applicants. And North Korea to send its delegation to 2018 Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. Announcement as rival countries met for their first high-level talks in more than two years. Our top story at the top of one, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the first Persons of Indian Origin Parliamentary Conference in New Delhi today. Speaking at the event, uh, the Narendra Modi government urged the PIO parliamentarians uh, to play the role of a catalyst in India's economic development. The Prime Minister also said that the government's focus is on capacity building and resource development. He also hailed the contribution of Indians based abroad. 124 members of parliament and 17 mayors from 23 nations are taking part in the conference. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu is slated to address the conference in the evening. While MPs are from UK, Canada, Fiji, Kenya, Mauritius, New Zealand, Sri Lanka and other nations are taking part. 17 mayors from the US, Malaysia, Switzerland, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago are also present at the conference. With the 20 members of parliament and three mayors, Guyana is attending the event with the biggest delegation. The US delegation is represented by only two mayors as the Senate is in session. Two years ago. ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स में हमारी रैंक में 21 स्थानों का सुधार हुआ है लॉजिस्टिक परफॉर्मेंस इंडेक्स में 19 अंकों का सुधार हुआ है आज वर्ल्ड बैंक आईएमएफ मूडीज जैसी संस्थाएं भारत की ओर बहुत पॉजिटिव तरीके से देख रही हैं Construction, air transport, mining, computer software, hardware, electrical equipments, ऐसे अनेक सेक्टरों में अब तक हुए निवेश का आधे से ज्यादा निवेश और ये मैं बहुत जिम्मेवारी के साथ कह रहा हूं अब तक जो निवेश हुआ है उसमें आधे से ज्यादा निवेश सिर्फ और सिर्फ पिछले तीन वर्ष में हुआ है यह सब इसलिए हुआ है क्योंकि हम भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था के हर हिस्से में फार रिचिंग पॉलिसी रिफॉर्म्स ला रहे हैं रिफॉर्म to transform ye hamara guiding principle hai vishwa ke sath bharat ke sambandhon mein ke liye yadi sahi maayne mein koi permanent ambassador hai to wo bharatiya mul ke log hain aap log hain bharat ke vikas ke liye hamare prayason mein hum pravasi bharatiyon ko apna पार्टनर मानते हैं नीति आयोग ने 
भारत के विकास के लिए 2020 तक का जो एक्शन एजेंडा बनाया है उसमें प्रवासी भारतीयों को विशेष स्थान दिया गया है and delivering the opening remarks to external affairs minister sushma swaraj said that the contributions of indians living abroad is exemplary to zyada tar girmitiya deshon se aaye hain inko samne rakh kar ke humne ye theme rakha sangharsh se sansad tak ka safar kyunki jab wo yahan se gaye the to unhone keval sangharsh nahi uske sath sath yatnaye bhi sehni padi thi लेकिन उस समय प्रधानमंत्री जी महात्मा गांधी का जाना हुआ था मॉरिशियस और वहां उन्होंने शिवसागर राम गुलाम जी से कहा था अगर स्वाभिमान से इस देश में जीना चाहते हो तो दो चीजें अपनाओ अपने बच्चों को पढ़ाओ और उनमें राजनीतिक चेतना जगाओ राजनीति में हिस्सा लेना शुरू करो और गांधी जी के ये दो मूल मंत्र उन्होंने पल्ले गांठ की तरह बांध लिए थे आज उसी का परिणाम है कि उन्हें बंधुआ मजदूरों की तीसरी पीढ़ी शासक बन और आज जो हमारे सामने बैठे हुए लोग हैं आज उसी मॉरिशस में इससे पहले वाले प्रधानमंत्री भी भारतीय मूल के थे और आज वाले प्रधानमंत्री भी भारतीय मूल के हैं दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इज पार्ट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव एम्ड एट स्ट्रेंथनिंग आर एंगेजमेंट एंड आउटरीच विद इंडियन डायस्पोरा एंड this is first of its kind to serve as a platform for all our diaspora parliamentarians and mayors to share their experience and discuss about the role and contribution of diaspora all right my colleague akhilesh suman is now joining us live from delhi akhilesh on a pravasi bharatiya divas today at the first pio conference we saw prime minister narendra modi lauding the role of the nris and also emphasizing reform to transform as the government's guiding principle Yes, as far as this is the first PIO parliamentarians conference. This is not the normal PIO conference. This is the first PIO parliamentarian conference. I do know that this is of immense importance because these yes. are the parliamentarians who are sitting in their respective country in their respective parliament, and they are the people who influence the policies of their uh, their country's governments. So I think that this is the one of the major uh, initiatives of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi led government that parliamentarian. of indian high origin have been given importance and you know this is second of its kind the first of its kind is in italy where the parliament is three tier one is the house of upper house the other is lower house and the third is the diaspora house and you know that italy has a diaspora house where mps from many other um, all their diaspora are elected and they can sit in that uh, house so india i think has taken the cue from that and uh, not in that form but the major way to influence our people who have struggled to become the parliamentarian to join the politics and you know that uh, uh, the external affairs minister sushma swaraj is, was telling that mauritius is a country where people of indian origin became prime minister and president not once but more than often so i think it is one of the issues that india wanted to understand that whether we can tap the energy of indians living abroad and we had tapped the energy of indian living abroad and 90 billion dollar fti has come in last 3 uh, years and if it has come it was the major uh, uh, climate making in their respective country by the diaspora people and they have uh, influenced their governments so now uh, we have to go to another stage and the another stage is political achievement on the world stage and as prime minister told that we have made so many inroads uh, uh, in the un and in the global thing that we have started uh, yoga day and it was getting supported from 177 countries then the solar alliance these are the major by india and mm. there are uh, so many things the reform of world bank the reform of united nations security council these are the things that is there in india's diplomatic mind and mm. i think that uh, reaching out to the parliamentarians is one of the major initiative in this uh, direction eswarya also prime minister narendra modi also highlighting the fact that how india has uh, changed uh, you know he was talking about the chalta hai attitude and he said that uh, you know there is change that is evident in not only one sector yeah. but all the sectors now 
Yeah, right. Uh, the major thing, you know, that uh, our NRIs, our people of Indian origin, they were living in their respective country. They have gone uh, years uh, ago, some century ago, and they, they felt very inferior when the matter of development used to come. And now when India is reforming, the new economic reforms have taken, uh, taken off in the country, infrastructure is changing, so there is a need of making them confidence about their country of origin. Yes. And that is why Prime Minister Nand Modi, wherever he goes abroad, he yeah. has made it a point uh, mm. from the very first visit uh, uh, from Bhutan to wherever he goes, he makes a meeting with the Indians who are living there. Yes. And that has created a level of confidence in the Indians who are living there. And I think that they have to be given message that India has transformed in a way that you can compare with any developed uh, state. Mm. And I I this is the way that you get uh, confidence, respect of the people, not only of the foreigners, but also of your own people. And they start coming there. I mean, when they go back from India to their respective country, they tell right. uh, the India story, the growth story, the facilities India has created for businessmen, for tourists, and then uh, 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 the whole income uh, um, uh, comes, revenue comes from abroad. Absolutely. So this is why uh, Narendra Modi and even uh, any minister, external affairs minister, Sushma Swaraj, always showcases that uh, uh, India is growing, India has grown, and yes. India is reaching to a stage when you will not have any problem if you come here. So tourism was one right. of the major stresses that Prime Minister Ren Modi gave, that yes, yes, tourism infrastructure has uh, developed in our countries and we have right created uh, transportation like metro and other things. So even the NRIs right who are present, PIOs who are present in this conference, they are also telling that yes, India has changed and I Absolutely. was hearing one of the Canada's MP, he India was seven has times MP in and he was mentioning direction. that, that has when also he been went uh, first emphasized time, he uh, felt in the that conference and uh, Vice President M. Venkai Naidu is also slated to address the conference in the evening. Thank you so much, Akhilesh, for all those updates there. On to news from Jammu and Kashmir now. Two militants were shot dead in an encounter with security forces in Anantnag's Kokernag district today. A search operation led to a gun battle after the terrorists fired towards the security forces' positions. Security forces launched a cordon and search operation in the area for information about the presence of terrorists there. According to police officials, the exchange of fire between the two sides is going on and uh, reports say that uh, five more terrorists are believed to be trapped. And now news from the markets where Sensex and Nifty continue to touch record highs in early morning trade for the third straight day today. Now the BSE Sensex hit a fresh record high of 34,487.52 points. While BSC Nifty touched a lifetime high of uh, 10,659.15 in the opening session. The rupee opened at 63.48 a dollar and was trading at 63.47 a dollar, up 0.03 percent from its Monday's close of 63.5 per dollar. And Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri has been elected unopposed in a bipole to the Rajya Sabha seat from Uttar Pradesh. The seat had fell vacant following the resignation of Manohar Parikar, who quit as a defence minister last year. Career diplomat and politician, 65-year-old Puri, became housing and urban development minister in the month of September. Meanwhile, the Aam Aadmi Party also marked its entry into the Rajya Sabha with all of three candidates of the party, namely Sushil Gupta, Sanjay Singh and N.D. Gupta, getting elected unopposed. The induction of these three MPs in the Rajya Sabha takes the Aam Aadmi Party's strength to seven in Parliament. The party has the four MPs already in the Lok Sabha. And the State Election Commission of Gujarat has announced elections for around 1,420 village panchayats to be held on 4th of February and the counting of votes will take place on the 6th of February. The elections to the village panchayats comes a couple of months after the State Assembly elections and the Commission in a press release said that the election notification was issued on 5th of January and the last day for the filing of nomination is 20th of January. Elections will be held in a regular course to most of the village panchayats as their term is ending.
On to news from the national capital where a Dalit leader Jignesh Mewani's planned rally in the national capital has been cancelled after Delhi police denied permission for the rally. However, Delhi police also tightened security fearing law and order situation after the cancellation of the Yuva Hunkar rally triggered massive protests there. Around 2,000 security personnel including paramilitary forces have been deployed and additional forces from other districts of the city have also been called in. Delhi police said that the permission for the rally was denied in the wake of orders from the NGT that no protest can be staged at Jantar Mantar. दो करोड़ युवा को रोजगार दो सोशल जस्टिस को एंश्योर किया जाए सिर्फ इतना बात बहुत ही विनम्रता के साथ डेमोक्रेटिकली पीसफुली कानून और संविधान के दायरे में रहकर हम बात करने जा रहे हैं और हमको भी परमिशन नहीं दे तो बहुत हद हो गई आपको लगता है कि सरकार आपको टारगेट कर रही है बिल्कुल अनडाउटेडली कर रही है दलित समाज को कर रही है युवा वर्ग को कर रही है एक इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव को बोलने नहीं दोगे हद हो गई यार and Supreme Court has modified its order on the national anthem saying that it is not mandatory to play it in the cinema halls before a feature film. The modification of its order comes after the centre had suggested to the Apex Court to modify its earlier order, making it mandatory for the cinema halls to play the national anthem in cinema halls. The centre had told the court that an inter-ministerial committee has been set up for framing of guidelines. It will describe circumstances and occasions on which the national anthem is to be played or sung and observance of proper decorum on such occasion that requires extensive consultations. The government had asked the top quarter to consider the restoration of status quo until then as it stood before the order passed by the Apex Court on 30th of November 2016. It said the committee will give its recommendations in six months or from the date of its constitution. And the government has extended its deadline to link Aadhaar with the small saving schemes to 31st of March 2018. A finance ministry notification said that the deadline for linking Aadhaar to schemes like the post office deposits of Kisan Vikas Patra has been extended by three months. Now as many as 135 schemes including a free LPG to poor women, kerosene and fertilizer subsidy, targeted public distribution system and Mandrega will be covered by the extension. Earlier, the last date for the submission of Aadhaar number was 31st of December 2017. An Army Chief General Bipin Rawat on Monday said that there has been a major reduction in Chinese troops at the Doklam region on Sikkim-Bhutan border. Commenting on the track construction by the Chinese worker in Arunachal Pradesh Tooting area, General Rawat said that the matter has been sorted out. Rawat also said that, that there has been a very major reduction of the Chinese troops along the international border. The Army Chief also said that security forces were trying to minimize casualties on its side while conducting counter-insurgency operations in Jammu and Kashmir. There has been a very major reduction from the Chinese side. Our force is very aware of human rights. Because we have built a lot of operations in the built-up area, what happens is that the terrorists have an initiative. They fire first, we fire after that. So, in such situations, there are some casualties in our operations. But our goal is that we will operate in such a way that we will reduce our casualties at least. Let's get you all the weather updates and cold wave conditions continue to prevail in northern and eastern parts of the country. Intense cold claimed at least 42 lives in Bihar. Dense fog across the northern plains also hindered the movement of vehicles and train services. In Bihar, the death toll in the season so far has gone up to 42. Purnia was the coldest place in the state where 1.2 degrees Celsius temperature was recorded. Over one dozen trains have been cancelled in the state and the trains passing through Bihar are running around 10 to 15 hours late due to fog. Air traffic has also been affected due to low visibility. In Odisha, Kandhamal's Daring Badi and Pulbani recorded a minimum temperature of 4 degrees Celsius while 15 other places registered a minimum temperature below 10 degrees Celsius. The Med Department has predicted a continuation of a moderate cold wave over some parts of the state during the next 48 hours. In Himachal Pradesh, the minimum temperature stayed at a minus 12.6 degrees Celsius at Kelong and in Lahore and Spiti, 
while Manali and Kalpa reeled under piercing cold wave conditions with a low of minus 4.6 and minus 4 degrees Celsius, respectively. In Uttar Pradesh, educational institutions up to class 8th have been closed till Wednesday in several districts in view of severe cold wave conditions. Meanwhile, in Jharkhand, uh, Jamshedpur registered a minimum of 6.3 degrees Celsius, which was the lowest this season. The East uh, Singhbhoom District Administration directed the schools to declare a holiday till 10th of January for school students up to class 5 and reschedule the school timings for class 6 to class 12 in view of the cold wave conditions. And Commerce and Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu chaired the third meeting of the Council for Trade Development and Promotion on Monday. As part of a boosting exports, the centre urged the states to formulate their own export policy. The states have to identify those products and services of interest that have significant potential in the global arena. Here are the details. As you know, that the Commerce and Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu held consultations with several stakeholders in the national capital on Monday to give a fillip to export sector and make India an export hub. The deliberation flagged the global and domestic challenges faced by the exporters as well as possible solutions to overcome such challenges. The meeting also provided inputs for a new export strategy by states focusing on integrating India into regional and global value chain. So 14 states have prepared their export strategy. Goa, Delhi and Sikkim are, to, they are in the process of initiating it. So I think this is something on the cards. But the good idea is that states are now feeling that it is also their responsibility. The consultations also aim to promote exports by simplification of the GST processes and leveraging benefits of GST. The focus of the deliberations was also on exploring new markets and products as well as increasing India's share in traditional markets and products. The solution to GST refund lies in the fact that you don't have to first spend and claim refund. So you're working on a system, e-wallet system, which will not require the exporters to first pay and then refund, but rather than they will be working through a completely different regime. India's exports rose 30.55% to $26.19 billion in November 2017 on account of improved global demand, government initiatives and simplification of GST refund process. Exports had witnessed a decline of 1.12% to $23 billion in October. The five-year foreign trade policy has set an ambitious target of India's goods and service exports touching $900 billion by 2020. It also aims at increasing India's share of world exports to 3.5% from the current 2%. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to the other top story, in a huge relief for Indians working in the United space, uh, States, especially the techies there, the Trump administration has reportedly dropped a change in the H-1B visa rule that would have denied extensions beyond the maximum permissible period of six years while waiting for the green card. The announcement came as a major relief to Indian H-1B visa holders who are waiting for their green card who, are, who were at the risk of deportation if a proposal to end granting extension to visa under this program was accepted. The proposal in the form of an internal memo circulated in the Hip Department of Homeland Security had set out to end the provision of granting extensions to the H-1B visa holders whose applications for permanent residency or a green card had not been accepted. An estimated 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50 thousand Indian H-1B visa holders could have been deported if the administration decided to go ahead with the proposal which was in line with President Donald Trump's Buy American, Hire American vision to boost manufacturing and protect local jobs for Americans. And India has rejected U.S.'s allegations of protectionism regarding its solar power policies at the World Trade Organization. India's statement came after the U.S. litigated last month that India had discriminated against foreign supplies of solar cells and modules, thus violating WTO rules. In a statement, India said that it had tweaked to comply with the WTO rulings and that the U.S.'s demand for punitive action against India was not a valid request. 
India further said that it is exploring new protection of its own solar industry. The top international story, North Korea will send a delegation to the 2018 Winter Olympic Games are taking place in South Korea in the month of February. The breakthrough announcement came as the countries met for their first high-level talks in more than two years. The talks are taking place in the Pan Numjom Peace Village in the demilitarized zone at the border. The North Korean delegation that will travel to South Korea will include athletes and supporters. The event will be the first time that North Korea has participated in the Winter Games in eight years. During the talks, South Korea also proposed holding family reunions during the Winter Olympics for the people who have been separated by the Korean War. Tensions have been rising in the Korean Peninsula as the North continues to rapidly advance its banned nuclear weapons program. However, in his New Year address, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had proposed holding a dialogue with the South Korea to discuss his country's participation in the Winter Olympic Games. The South welcomed the proposal and followed it up by reconnecting the direct communication link at the joint security area between the two Koreas. and a tanker carrying Iranian oil that collided with a Chinese freight ship on Saturday evening in the East China Sea is still on fire. Dozens of rescue boats are struggling to control the blaze. Poor weather conditions with heavy winds are hampering the efforts to trace 31 missing crew members. One body was recovered by the rescue teams from the scene of the blaze on Monday. According to environmentalists, the disaster has the potential to be the worst since 1991 when 2,60,000 tons of oil leaked off the Angolan coast. Now to cricket news, India lost the first test match against Sri uh, South Africa by 72 runs in Cape Town yesterday. They're chasing a target of 208 runs, India were all out for just 135 in the second innings. Vernon Philander took six wickets while Moni Mokul and Kagiso Rabada took two wickets each. Even as uh, South Africa took a 1-0 lead in the three-match test series. R. Ashwin was the top scorer from the Indian side with 37 runs, while there was a little contribution from the rest of the team. Earlier, South Africa were all out for 130 runs in the second inning, setting a India a target of 208 runs to win. De Villiers fought a lone battle and looked good before losing his wicket. He was the last man to be dismissed as South Africans were bowled out for 130. Just with Bumrah and Mohammad Shami were the pick up for the bowlers from the Indian side as both oh, took excellent. three wickets apiece. Just a little. And then I have a crack with the last two when the field comes up. That's it. How far has it gone? Not far enough. And that's all in this edition of Midday News. But news and updates continue on your channel. Thanks for watching.